Hey, Granny Gear here for Old Guy on a Bike. Welcome to the 2024 Sea Otter Classic. I'm hiding from the sun and I'm eating pancakes. I'm here with, uh, it's Kodiak. And they got pancake mix and they got protein bars. Pancakes, flapjaps, hot off the griddle. Thanks for the pancakes. You're welcome, thank you. <laughs> okay, you hear it all the time, don't you? Bikes are too expensive, they're too niche. They're too fragile, they're not practical. Well, and did I say they're too expensive? Yeah. Well, what if maybe they weren't? How about Hudski? Let's take a look at what a Hudski is. Hey y'all, I'm Brian Zaccone, co-founder of Hudski Bikes, and we are giving a little sneak peek on our new model this year, the Hudski Duelist. It's a uh, boost-spaced uh, rigid mountain bike using a UDH rear derailleur it has adjustable geometry, front and rear. So you have a two different chainstay lengths, a 435 and a 450 millimeter chainstay. And then the fork offset also has fork offset change from 44 millimeters to 54. This really gives you a lot of versatility with the bike. You're able to really just do some adjustments to make it fit your needs for what you want to be doing with it. And it builds off of a platform that has a lot of different uses. So from either commuting, bike packing, single track riding, it can be used for all of those different things with some minor adjustments or just set it and forget it. Um, our new bike has more chain state clearance so you're able to run a 38 chain ring. So if you're doing more commuter miles or if you're in a flat area, that's really nice. And then also bigger tire clearance. So you're able to run, we like to run the 2.25, which is nice all around. ATB alt bike kind of size um, but if you're going for more sandy area or a longer kind of tour you can fit a 27.5 by 2.8 so or if you want to stick with 29 in the rear position you can fit a 2.5 so it's very versatile for tire sizes um, our bikes are ready for dropper seat posts so you're able to run a dropper seat post really easily with our bottom rack design it's a two-piece forged clamshell design so the cables route really smoothly through there. Um, yeah, and just lightweight platform, a lot of ways to build it. And like you said, on the more affordable side, I know bikes can get kind of crazy days, but 2200 for a SLX 12 speed group with Shimano brakes and a dropper seat post is right in that sweet spot of affordability for this. Yeah, it's kind of obvious, but it's an aluminum frame, I should point out. Alloy frame, carbon fiber fork, uh, mountain bike tested so but still super lightweight so the build it builds up at around 24 25 pounds if you've been whining the bikes are too niche too complicated too expensive stop whining and buy a hudski all right you guys <laughs> Okay, now if you've been to my YouTube channel at all, you know I am no stranger to Turner bikes because David Turner, he builds some amazing titanium frames. I've been loving his Turner Cyclosis and now we've got something new here. It is the Venn. Yeah. All right. Hello. Hello. Uh, all right, so I'm David Turner, Turner Bikes. This is Sea Otter 2024. So I got a couple of new models this year. Really excited about uh, both of them, really. Um, this one is called the Venn, and Venn like the Venn diagram. Um, it's kind of a do everything mountain bike. In the past, uh, we've introduced the nitrous, and the nitrous was very progressive, 66 and a half degree head angle, steeper seat tube angle, you know, longer, lower slacker, right? Modern, fast bike. Not everybody wanted that. And I've been hearing enough over the last few years since the nitrous was introduced. Uh, riders that want a little bit less aggressive or less progressive geometry. So with the Venn, I thought, okay, so I can make something that, you know, isn't quite so narrowly focused. And Venn 
can do all kinds of things. We have it here set up as a bike packing bike with a steeper head tube angle. I know. Steeper head tube angle, right? In 2024. Yeah, I think that in some cases, a little steeper head tube angle actually is going to work better, especially for those that uh, have been riding a long time, do not want the super slack head angle, or have a load on the front of the bike with a really slack head tube angle, the loaded front end makes it ponderous, okay? So pulled the head tube angle a little back, and then on the C tube angle, slackened it. Again, a little more traditional geometry, so you're sitting a little uh, further behind the center of the bottom bracket and not feeling quite so perched. I also shortened the, re the reach a little bit and increased the stack to increase the comfort a little bit. Going along with the whole adventure or more of a traditional, um, you know, work on it yourself kind of mountain bike, do anything, go anywhere, full external cable routing. Uh, except for, of course, the dropper post. It has enter the seat tube at the bottom. I put a slider dropout on it. And the slider dropout that's being used on this bike is used on two other models as well. The thing that sets it apart from so many others is it's got a full 25 millimeters of fore and aft adjustment. So that allows a big range of tires. So the 3D printed uh, lower yoke on this bike is wide enough for a 29 by 3 on a 40 millimeter rim. The bike is drawn for a 120 fork. Obviously, you can put a little longer fork on there, but I am testing a fully rigid titanium fork that's 29 by 3 compatible, uh, dynamo hub, cable routing, 55 millimeter offset. And on this bike, it works so good. Um, I know it's it is a paint. Rigid forks are painful, but there is a place for them and they are a lot of fun. I don't know if it's fun, but they're satisfying. And this is a 510 axle to crown fork, which basically is the same as a 120 fork sag. 180 uh, rotor post mount. Um, the slider is 180 native, so you don't need an after you just put it 180 on there. Of course, like the, all the other bikes, T47 bottom bracket, tapered head tube, Oh, and of course, being the do everything kind of bike, it's got lots of places to, you know, we got a triple mount here, triple mount under there, two, you know, uh, mounts here, top tube, there's two under here. We have a rack and a fender mount, rack mount, fender on the bridge. It's ready for just about everything. So dropper post ready. Dropper, yeah. So the routing on this is the only one where the routing is behind the seat tube, and I did that to basically just make sure there was nothing in here if anybody wanted to run a full custom frame bag. But great idea, great idea. And that is the van. The van. Is this vegan? Probably not. Maybe they were vegan chickens it was made from. Wow. A little bit of a rock crawling buggy there. <laughs> that is a tire. <laughs> I did a video a long time ago about uh, if One Up USA was the last bike rack you'll ever need to buy. I think it is. I've been using one for like 10 years. They're awesome. I'm at One Up USA in Sea Otter. We want to take a look at their newest rack, the Super Duty, and uh, let's see what it is. What's going on? So this is the new Super Duty. It's replacing the current one. Uh, the current one has a 75 pound capacity and is really similar to the one that you reviewed. Um, and that this is kind of the evolution of that. So. First, each tray, the first two trays can handle, handle up to 100 pounds now. Um, and in order to do that, we basically beefed up all of the side plates, the pivot beams, and everything to be a thicker, stronger material. It still pivots like the old one does, up and down, all that's the same. But the most notable things is now, instead of having to lift the lever to open, if you push this in and lift up, this is now one handed. The other thing is that it's now adjustable, so it can go from what our current racks are at 54 inch wheelbase to 58, or you can offset right and left at 56 to give you more seat post and handlebar clearance. 
Uh, aside from that, we've added about two inches in between each tray as well for uh, down tube and like flat pedal clearance. And it's still compatible with all of our add-on accessories, so you can upgrade your rack and reuse all that stuff. And that's nice. pretty much the and bulk of it. you can put a ramp on this, right? Yes. So this arm now opens all the way and goes down. And we have a ramp accessory that clips on so you can roll your heavy bike up. And the ramp stows on the add-on as, as another tray there. I actually have a friend who's got an e-bike and he's got a bad back. So he bought the ramp system for his one-up. He loves it. All right, One Up USA, it probably is the last rack you will ever buy, and that's not a bad thing. All the parts are replaceable, they're metal, they last forever, and if you do mess something up, you can just get that part and not throw the whole thing away. And they're light and much easier to take off your car than a big heavy rack from, well, those other guys. All right, that's One Up USA. Okay, you just never know, you're gonna find some really, really cool stuff at Sea Otter. Have you ever wondered, you got a whole bunch of bikes, maybe you got a club ride, maybe you got a shop ride, maybe you just got a bunch of friends, maybe you're at a race venue or something and you think, you got bikes laying all over the place, but you don't wanna put racks in your house, right? Or wherever you are, you, how can you take a bike rack with you? Well, there was an aha moment, and I'm here at aha, and that's with two H's, and they got a solution that just might be perfect for your needs. Let's take a look at what they got. Good. Hit it, brother. Good. Hey, I'm Darren. I'm the founder of AHA, and we have created Toaster. <laughs> toaster. <laughs> so, so Toaster, yes, because it looks like it does. A, a Toaster. Yeah. Uh, toaster is the world's simplest, most portable bike parking solution. So Toaster, simple enough. Uh, when deployed, Toaster can hold anywhere from one to five bikes, three on one side, two facing the other. And when you're ready to go, pack up from the race at home. It's as simple as wow. ready to go. And how much does it weigh? So Toaster weighs 14 pounds. Oh, uh, dimensions, inch and three quarter thick by 28 by 33 at the end of the day. So this will slide into most, most spaces. Uh, cargo van, back of the RV, back of a hatchback, you can lay it flat, put your other gear on top of it. Uh, toaster's made from all aluminum parts and stainless steel hardware. So this should last longer than anything you own. It's made here in the U.S. right outside of Atlanta, in the Ooh. U.S. of A. Holy smokies. And what, what are, uh, what's the retail on that? So Toaster retails for $3.99. Okay. And considering how many times you will probably end up using Toaster, eventually that'll turn out to be just pennies oh, per yeah. use. It's going to last forever. It'll, it'll, yeah. It'll, it should. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. All right. Yeah, I love it. I love out-of-the-box thinking. Thanks. All right. A Toaster. Who knew?